This is lesson two in a series of tapes entitled Old Cosmic Consciousness given by Father Paul of the Holy Order of Mans on October 14, 1969. This lesson can also be heard on tape number 602B. Desired likewise, 
would experience the same earthly utopia since almost every human wants this liberation from the earthly trials and tribulations and the want that he might even then experience other things if he were not on this globe. The fact that every very few attain it, it denotes that the cosmic is not assuming the task of living your life and mine. Neither is St. Paul nor St. John maybe I should leave off Paul or St. John coming down in your wee hours of the morning and tapping you on the shoulder and saying, my dear boy, you really had a tough time. We're going to eliminate that tomorrow. Oh, no. <laughs> if the responsibility for human well-being or happiness were vested entirely in the cosmic, man would not need to possess many of his properties or have a obtain or be given even the spiritual gifts. He would not need moral adjustment or discernment, either one. And such notions as right and wrong, good or bad, just or unjust, there would be but one state of existence for him. And all these other connotations would be absolutely unnecessary. <clears throat> In fact, under those circumstances, we could do away with all the sciences entirely. However, a man is able to get himself in and out of difficulties and back into difficulties. And he is permitted to do so. He may submit to, and he may also master adversity. And that would be sufficient proof to the average intelligent person that the vicissitudes of life are largely his own doing. This being so, he would have no right to expect the cosmic to assume our problems entirely or to pick us up and set us down in the right place. Suppose, for example, Ours is the problem of employment. <coughs> Perhaps on very little notice, we have been suddenly dismissed from a much needed position. Our financial resources are low and our obligations many. And we have lifted a listening ear to that man and the corner store the credit manager and thus we no longer owe we are owned it follows that it is imperative that we find our employment quickly and there are two ways in which we may go about it we may elect to visit daily our every employment agency of which we have any knowledge. We may in addition have a study of the city directory to determine what businesses might use our particular services and canvas each one. We might also even ask, answer personally or by letter each uh, want ad or 
inquiry, advertisement in the daily press or other media. Whether or not we were experienced in the line of work, if we thought we could possibly qualify, in other words, we could be diligent in exerting every effort to obtain that employment. It is this misunderstanding of what the cosmic will do for a man that causes many people eventually to lose faith in the cosmic efficiency. Often we hear people say, I turned my problem over to the cosmic and I have had no indications after a long wait of any improvement in my affairs. Consequently, I do not believe that we can expect cosmic help. We must not believe that the cosmic will do for us what we are often quite capable of doing for ourselves if we use our initiative. Some re may reply to this by saying, suppose we do not know what to do for ourselves. then what must we do? Such is a different circumstance. One who is blind is incapable of locating a lost article. But one who can see and make no search for it is not entitled to help. It is quite different to ask for a light that you may make a personal search for something that is to ask another to do it. For you, when you can see perfectly well to do it yourself, you must move out on it. And if you will remember our quotes of the law and prayer, you will remember my saying, move out on it without doubt. When we sincerely want to solve our personal problems and are willing to extend mental and physical effort to do so, but lack the knowledge of how to proceed, it is then proper to petition the cosmos. But are you willing to do something about it yourself? Our petition should run something like this. Now this isn't a straight prayer of the law, so to speak, and yet it is. Cosmic mind and God of the heart of all people, this is my problem. Brief explanation. I, in good faith and before my conscience, believe I am entitled to what I seek and that I am not injuring or depriving another of what is his just due. I therefore beseech thee to inspire my consciousness with the idea or the concept which will constitute a directing of the way by which I may attain my desire if they are proper and not in another's way. By this procedure you have turned to the cosmic, not as a master to a servant, or as an employer to an employee, but as a humble human seeking advice from a benevolent intelligence. Here we have, again, the same attitude that we approach the God for the work and the power which comes down to us. Then we have the law of prayer, which is useful. But this example shows us one thing that many of us have not learned, that we must be considerate of our brother man. We must be cognizant of the fact 
that they too are alive and we're not interested in taking anything away from them this one it is taken out of the realm of prayer and put onto the level of everyday action is a perfect example of consideration tolerance and humility in life one who has who re, uh, resorts to the practice of shifting his problems to the cosmic without first making a personal effort towards solution is adopting a negative attitude which will eventually leave him sadly disappointed. For you see, you have not started to perpetrate the first cause. You have not started to form up that first cause when you do not do this. Conversely, man must not be too presumptuous and attempt to instruct or demand the cosmic to perform or materialize something for him that he wouldn't do for himself. His very actions that he does not do it, does not move toward it, is a doubt. Is a, in reality, a question in his mind. Man must not consider himself a modern Latin who can rub a lamp and have his wishes fulfilled by the cosmic. Often we may be in our finite, limited, and frequently selfish consciousness honestly believe that what we want or think we need should be rightfully be ours or that it uh, will be of the uttermost benefit to us regardless of who else loses out. We cannot always see the consequences of what we may ask for. Actually, our lack of knowledge of cosmic principles may cause us to ask inadvertently for something which is in violation of what the cosmic would consider in the balance of right and just. Cosmic, on the other hand, is in infinite wisdom and justice, will not permit us, especially when we are innocent of any wrongdoing, to jeopardize our lives seriously by fulfilling such a request. For many times people ask for things they do not know how to handle. They have no understanding or they are not equipped to handle. Thus, you have remembered, perhaps, that I have said, when others are involved, ask for right action. Then whoever gets moved, it will not be us and it will not because become cognizant of what we ask for just because we were selfish. And they will be moved, and if they are, they will be moved into a much better position. Then for two apparent reasons. First, we may be asking for something to be brought about that is detrimental to our own good. Second, man must be in his relationships with the cosmic, admit his humble station and not be vain because he has learned to indicate that the powers and the law will work. Regard the situation of finding oneself out regarding this uh, situation of finding oneself out of employment, the procedure would be first as follows. First he would analyze himself. He would not try to get a carpenter's job if he was a pharmacist. He would not lie that he could handle uh, a 
an elevator if he had been a little chemist. He would not try to work a punch press if he didn't know how to work a hand riveter. All of these things are perfect honesty, and perfect honesty comes before the reward. We would ask ourselves what were his real qualities and qualifications, what he had to sell or offer to anyone or to some particular branch or to someone in that branch of work, in exchange for the compensa compensation he wanted or expected to receive. Then he would evaluate these services after he had listed them, either on paper or in mind. Were they the best of their kind? Could he, be, could he do as well in his trade or profession as anyone else? who had the same experience. He would then ask himself, had he tried to improve his qualifications, or had he been satisfied just to get by, namely, command the uttermost for his services and get in return just what was necessary to hold the position. This is when you stop to think of it, and as you go along, you will stop to think of it. Maybe not tonight, maybe not tomorrow night, but you will think of it. You have oft times looked into the far blue yonder at the red planet Mars, would look like to you, if you're suddenly placed upon it, you would wonder, what would my consciousness be there? Would I understand? Would I be like I am now? While you could imagine conditions very different in organization and arrangement from what you are familiar with on this earth, you still would imagine nothing completely new. Artists have attempted to paint pictures of imaginary scenes on other planets. But if you analyze such pictures, you will find elements are of these pictures are composed of conditions and things which we are familiar with here and now, even through, even though we are in another form, and that there is nothing new in the picture except a different arrangement of what we'd already accepted as being the only kind of life that could exist. A high degree of cosmic consciousness than you now possess is something of which you have no knowledge and have not experienced. Therefore, if anyone tells you that he can explain a process to reach that state, he is vastly in error and either try to deceive you or to misinform you, try this experiment and listen, listen to the long hairs of theology beat around the bush with their many chapters that when you have gotten through, you have read nothing. Try this experiment. Stop and think for a moment of something you were uh, doing six to twelve hours previous. Think of some event that took place in the past twelve hours that stands out vividly in your memory. Give your whole attention 
to that incident for a period of 30 seconds or a minute. After you have thought of it to the point where you almost feel you are reliving it, if you have been fortunate enough to have that much imagination left after being uneducated, readjust your thinking. Eliminate from your mind the use of all words and visualization. In other words, without using words in your thinking or visualizing, try again to think of the same incident. You will find that you will have a very rough time doing it. You will find that you cannot do it usually. You will find that your memory is built up of primarily visual images of words that you have been brainwashed with. We translate practically all our experiences into terms of our vocabulary and we know nothing of experience. For experience does not come in words. The modern psychologist defines thinking as a process of sub-vocal talking. To a certain extent this definition in most cases is quite accurate. To a certain extent, I hope this definition will not be accurate long. When you think, it is usually no more than a process of talking to yourself. The reason you cannot clearly recall an incident from your memory without words or imagery is because you cannot conceive of an incident except in terms of words. And you cannot conceive of anything in terms of experience. If you cannot reconstruct in your consciousness, consciousness an incident with which you are familiar without utilization of word forms, then you've had no experience. How could you reconstruct in consciousness a condition concerning which you knew nothing through either knowledge or experience? For this reason, The states of development of cosmic consciousness must be acquired by the individual through collaboration of a chain of sound without form. product of the experience is in terms of our own understanding, not in terms of another's. We are very illustrate oft times in words. We can illustrate this by using the example image. Imagine there are three individuals the musician, the painter, and the engineer have an identical psychic experience. They have a vision which is inspirational and brings into their being the ideal of good and beauty. Being creative, they seek to put something of the experience into manifestation. What form would the result of these three people be if they interpreted and brought to you 
their consciousness are the same incident experienced at the same time in the same way. Would they know what the other man had experienced? Could they explain Johnny, Jim, and Charlie what had happened to one another? Can you explain to me, those who have gone under second vows, the reality of illumination? Can you explain to me what it is like to have the door of realization open without the use of words indistinct? English phrases. This, from this point on, then we only begin to tread the path of cosmic consciousness. All below this is nothing but a tree, a projection of words and our interpretations. That's all. From this point on, where we express ourselves within ourselves and our experience is the only expression we have, here is where cosmic consciousness starts. Anything below that is fallacy as far as it being cosmic consciousness is concerned. That is one of the reasons why we keep saying when you have a spiritual experience, don't say anything about it unless it's to the teacher that knows how to keep you from losing what you have gained. Don't talk about it. You're just kidding yourself. Because the other guy that you're talking to doesn't know a thing what you're saying. Not a thing. He couldn't. And you're only blocking his way. Because when he has a like experience, it is going to be different. Basically, basically comes under the same, you might say, main category. But the experience will be vastly different. Basically, you will not get rid of all the errors that you have made in this life or in any other in the past, the same as somebody else did. We will never be the same as the man next to you. Basically, you will never know the man that sits next to you. You can't. Not with physical, mental, mental consciousness. But if you gain true spiritual sight on that level, you may pick up his reflection and understand him pretty thoroughly. But this is from the standpoint of what the Testament gives when he says, I elect shall judge the earth.